This truly shocking secret to a great vegetable soup is sponsored by Squarespace, the shockingly simple solution to all of your website needs. Get 10% off your site by using my referral link in the description. Okay, if you want to make a great vegetable soup, the first step is to chop up some form of onion. I'm using a shallot. And then you got to slowly caramelize this for half an hour with a star anise. This creates umami sulfur compounds, something something molecular gastronomy. And no! Just chop it up and put it in a pot with some water and boil it! That's the secret. Then you peel a carrot, you chop it up into little pieces, and you boil those too. But then what you gotta do is spend 35 hours of your ever-shortening life making homemade chicken stock, or just buy the most expensive carton stock they have at the most bougie grocery store in town, and then no! Just leave it in the damn water and let it boil! Not every meal has to have an animal in it. And when you cook vegetables in plain old water, it's amazing how much you can actually taste them. Onions especially make a delicious broth with no other ingredients than water, heat, and time. The carrots will bring additional sweetness, and I'm starting with the longest cooking ingredients first. Onions and hard things, like carrots. Okay, the next super secret special step is to concasse a tomato. You take a tomato and you boil it for about 10 seconds to release the skin from the flesh underneath. Then you fish it out and plunge it into ice water. This halts the cooking and causes the skin to contract and split, making it easy to peel off because no self-respecting person would have a vegetable soup with tomato skin in it. Then you cut the tomato open and you cut out the bitter seeds and that nasty acidic gel that surrounds them. You want to let that all go to waste. Then you just take the little bit of outer solid flesh that's left and you dice that up into perfect little squares and then no! You just take any halfway decent tomato, chop it up into some random chunks, and put it in some water and boil it! Oh, Jesus, take the wheel on this one. Look, I'm not saying that you'll never want to take the skin off of a tomato, but in the soup, who cares? It's one tomato. There just won't be that much skin in there. Nobody will notice, and if they do, they won't care. Besides, the skins are rich in lycopene, a great antioxidant, and they're filled with pectin, which will thicken your soup as it cools. And the whole seeds and gel thing? I use tomatoes because they're acidic. I want acidity in my food. Why would I cut it out? And I don't know, maybe the seeds are bitter in sufficient concentration, but not in a vegetable soup. Just chop it up into some random chunks and boil it already. I usually do this after I've got all the hard ingredients in the water, and that seems to give the tomatoes the perfect amount of cooking time to fall apart while still retaining some freshness. Now, the next secret is to grab some white wine. This will add fruity sweetness and acidity to the broth while also extracting alcohol-soluble flavors from the vegetables. And no, actually, uh, yeah, that's totally something that I would do. It tastes great, and it really compensates for the lack of animal broth if that's something that you want to avoid. If you don't want to use alcohol, I would recommend a much smaller quantity of white balsamic vinegar, just a splash at the end to taste. After the hard vegetables have been cooking for about 20 minutes, I usually put in some form of cabbage. This is Tuscan kale. You could use any brassica, but what's great for soup is a kind with crinkly leaves. These deliver much more broth per square inch to your mouth, which gives them a really satisfying kind of juicy texture in the soup. Savoy cabbage is also great for the same reason. I'm just chopping those up into little ribbons and in it goes. The other ingredients could cook forever, but brassicas I think get a little nasty when you overcook them, so we're kind of on a timeline now. I cooked those for about 10 minutes. This is looking a little too thick to me, more like a stew than a soup, but you can always add water. You can't take it away. So I tend to lean on the side of my soup being too thick until I'm ready to make final adjustments. Then I go and chop up some garlic. I'll turn the heat off and throw this in at the very end to preserve its pungency. That's kind of a classic minestrone technique, fresh garlic right at the end. I also like to dump in some frozen peas at the end. Frozen peas are delicious and sweet and convenient. They add bright green color to compensate for the fact that the cabbage has gone a little bit brown by now. Also, the fact that they're cold will help to cool this soup down to eating temperature faster. Water stores an incredible amount of energy. It takes a long time to cool down, which is important for not only, you know, not burning your mouth, but also because the dissolved pectins in the broth won't start to thicken things up until this cools down a bit. I can also add some cold water to cool things down. As I said, this looked like it needed a little bit more water to me. And now that this is eating temperature, I can just season it until I like how it tastes. This is a lot of food. I think it needs a lot of salt, but just taste it until you like it. 
time to ladle this out into a bowl, and I might tear in some fresh basil or any other herb right at the very end. Other thing that I do right before I eat is drizzle in some olive oil. Nice, fruity, raw olive oil. And I don't really stir it in. I like big, sparkling bubbles on top. Not only does this taste amazing, but it helps your body to absorb the fat-soluble vitamins in the veggies. That is so good and comically easy and cheap. For 20,000 years since the advent of water-safe pottery, I'm willing to bet you that the single most popular recipe for food has been take whatever you have, boil it in some water for a while, and then eat it. It's a classic because it works. And when you're cooking for yourself, there's no extra points for a degree of difficulty. And you know what? Maybe it's just a placebo effect, but this is so good for me that I feel better immediately after I eat it just as you might feel better after you get that website up and running that you know you probably should have. Whether it's just a simple personal portfolio site or a bio with some links like my site here, or a full-blown online store, Squarespace has literally everything that you need. Really, everything. These are all the things I can just drop into any page on my site with a simple click. You can register a domain, choose a template that's right for you, and then just drop in your text and your pictures. There's even a built-in image editor. You can adjust every element to your liking or adjust nothing at all. Just buy the site off the rack. Actually, it's free to start building a site at squarespace.com. But when you're ready to publish it or buy a domain, just tell them I sent you and you'll get 10% off. You're a grown person with important things to do. There's no honor in building a website the hard way, just as there's no honor in making your own dinner the hard way. Just chop it up, put it in some water, and boil it!